Hey everybody, today is the release of Plasticity 24.2. There's a bunch of exciting new features for artistic and creative workflows, as well as some powerful new surfacing and precision modeling oriented workflows. I'm excited to show them to you. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show is the deform tool. And the deform tool allows us to take existing bodies, whether they're solids or sheets or wire bodies, and it allows us to warp them using a sort of neutral reference face that we first select, and then a target warped face. And the difference between these two faces is how your body is transformed. So you see that we started with a re relatively regular rectangular body and it has been tweaked to um, kind of inherit the curviness of this surface. We can also use some of these settings in the dialogue to position things or flip their orientation. We can scale them in certain directions and offset them in certain directions. And you can use this to um, to do a lot of very creative form finding. Um, you can use it to accomplish tapering, twisting, um, uh, really anything you can imagine. And it, you just need to be sort of creative in the way that um, you end up uh, choosing your source and target face and understanding some of the subtleties of how the mapping of like different directions, what is up, down, left, and right on the source and target surface all wind up. So let me show a couple tricks before moving on. So you can use this on solid bodies, on curved bodies. Um, for example, here we have a planar curved body, but it's not on the plane of the reference surface. It's sticking up in the normal direction. We can warp that onto this surface to create a kind of numerical dial, and we can offset it to really get it into the position we like. Um, one of the things that can sometimes be hard is constructing a neutral surface with the right proportions because up, down, left, right, the exact orientation and surface area of all these faces matters. So a simple thing to do is to take a surface and run the unwrap command, which will uh, create a rectangular neutral surface that's approximately the same uh, surface area approximately as the target face. And so you can do that uh, in such a way as that will make it much easier and more predictable for when you want to warp something from one surface onto another. The next thing I want to mention is that if you want to create a sort of 360 degree knurling pattern, a closed knurling pattern that goes all the way around a surface, you do need to break it into multiple pieces. You can't have like one face go all the way around. So here, for example, I have a knurling pattern that I have broken into two different pieces. It's not really a knurling pattern, but just bear with me. And if we want to deform this from this reference face onto this reference face, that will be one half. 
and we can deform to the other side. And from there, in this case, it's a sheet body, so we'll join it. But if it were uh, a solid, we would Boolean it. And now we have uh, a sort of 360 degree surface that uh, texture that we've sort of wrapped all the way around this guy. OK, the next feature I'm really excited to share with you guys is called the square command. Now, this is powered by XNERM, so this is a studio-only feature. We worked very closely with them to kind of develop new ideas and functions based on their underlying mathematics and geometrical technology. So just to show a quick example, if I run the square command on these four boundary curves, what the square command allows us to do is to create a spline surface with explicit control over the um, degrees and spans of the surface so that um, you can create high quality, almost class A surfaces that satisfy boundary constraints. Now, one thing that's very cool about this is unlike similar tools in other programs, you can use this on just two boundary curves to create a swept surface or three to create a birail surface or two non-touching curves to create a lofted surface. So this tool combines or replaces what is three or four tools in other surfacing programs into one. And it you can be explicit about the parameterization as well as satisfy the boundary conditions. And now to show how this works, if you create a surface that ha doesn't have enough complexity to satisfy the boundary conditions, you'll get a simple deviation plot. And you can use this to dial it everything in and satisfy the constraints. Or you can create simpler surfaces based on rough, lower quality input curves and use some of Xnerbs's underlying technology to create these higher quality surfaces and ignoring your input constraints or using them as Light. OK, now let me show a more interesting example. So here, um, I'm going to create a G2 uh, sort of sur surface blend here. I want it to be, um, I actually like this parameterization, uh, degree 5 in this, in this uh, direction, so in the V direction. So I'm going to co construct degree 5 surfaces all around here and then fill in this ball corner um, and when, when I'm done. I won't be going into too much some of these settings, but the weight control allows you to specify how strictly you want to adhere to the boundary conditions versus let the energy minimization function try and generate higher quality surface for you. But in any case, here I'm going to create some degree 5 surfaces given these input curves. These aren't super high quality curves. But now with that, I'll hide these blue curves. Now we can create, um, I'll join this to this, oops, excuse me, join, join, and join. All right, so we can take this hole and run the square command. And we would like this to be, say, G2. And we get this deviation plot. Uh, what we would need to do to satisfy all of these constraints is bump the complexity up to be 5 by 5 to match all of these adjacent surfaces. And you can see from this, the alignment of the hulls of the CVs is basically perfect given the input constraints that we gave it. I think the hulls are more or less planar or collinear. And we can do all of this and generate extremely high quality surfaces. It's not really class A, but this is approaching the kind of power that you would see in class A surfacing programs. Along those lines, we have a bunch of new tools. For example, this um, degree 4 uh, curve, we can run the rebuild command. And for the first time, we have explicit control over rebuilding curves, as well as rebuilding surfaces. This feature for rebuilding curves um, uh, with explicit control is actually something we built in-house. And so this is not powered by XNERB. So this is available to all license types. And let me finish by showing off a couple interesting commands uh, 
and then this very long video can come to an end. Okay, the next feature I want to focus on is um, related to measurement. So it's been the case in plasticity for a while that you can measure the distance between uh, faces, between bodies, um, let's say from here to here, um, and that those measurements are like interactive. As you move bodies around, you can see their values change. One thing that's new in this version of plasticity is you can use these measurements to drive the editing of your body. So for example, if I have this body selected and I run the move command, you'll notice that this is now underlined. I can click on this and now I can type in the value that I want. So let's say I want this body to the center of these two cylinders to be 4.5 meters away from one another. Um, or let's say I want to move this cylinder this, both of these are underlined. Let's say I want the cylinder distance from this face, I want this not to be 0.547, but exactly 0.5, let's say. And now I've set the position of this individual face driven by these measurements. So, so this is a really simple way in Plasticity now that you can use the measurements um, that you create between faces, between bodies, to drive the editing of the faces and position of those bodies. And it's really easy to align things and get everything um, in much more precise, simpler ways without relying on constraints and a parametric workflow. You can still orient things with a lot of precision. All right, this video is getting very long, so I'm going to show one more thing that I think is pretty cool and kind of hidden. So let me run the rectangular array command on this face. Um, we'll do, actually, let's just do this. Uh, and I'm going to select a lot of faces in this body. Now, this body is made up of planar and cylindrical faces. As you can see, six cylinders and six planes. These are now uh, clickable. So if you click on them, it will only select the cylinders. Let me undo. If you click on planes, it'll only select the planes. Um, if you have like, you know, uh, these are cylinder surfaces too, but if you have um, blend surfaces, you can use these powerful things to narrow down your selection and make um, selections much more quickly. So if you're trying to edit like a very complicated body, you can use the um, underlying surface type of your faces to um, start with these very broad selections and then just narrow them down to cylinders or just narrow them down to planes. And so, and you can use, you can hold down shift, you can hold down control. So for example, if I want to just deselect the planes, I control click on planes. So minor feature, kind of hidden, but very cool. And with that, I will leave you. Thank you for supporting Plasticity and see you at the next release.